Hello to my Built by the Lord class. We are in lesson number 12. What sort of reputation am I building? In 2020, 2021, the 21st century, we need to spend a little bit of time in this overall study talking especially about social media. Lots of ways that we build reputations, but undoubtedly one of the things that echoes from our homes is our social media use. And so I'd like to use God's word. I invite you to open a Bible with me back to Proverbs chapter 22. We're going to be all over the book of Proverbs and then one New Testament passage and we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to ask a series of questions. God's Word is already relevant. I don't have to make it relevant for you. You don't have to make it relevant for others. We just need to lean on these ancient insights for modern living and apply them to this age where so many of us have megaphones where we can reach the entire world for good or not so good? What sort of reputation am I building? Is your Bible open to Proverbs chapter 22? I want you to notice the wisdom of verse 1, where a long time ago we were told a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. I want you to think about that. A good name... We ought to choose that before we would choose great riches. And one of the reasons for that is you can't buy a new name. You can't order a new reputation from Amazon. You can't have some company ship you a new way that people look at you. You only have one name. If you're a member of a family, if you're watching this together as a family, your family has one last name that you all share. And individually, as a family, we are building reputations. What sort of reputation are we building? I'd invite you for the rest of our time in this study to open with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to go back to Proverbs quite a bit, but I'll flash the Proverbs reference up on the screen. I would love it if you would read along with me from Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to begin in verse 17, and we're just going to go verse by verse in a very bullet point sort of way, especially applying this ancient God-breathed insight to this social media, hyper-connected age in which we live. Am I building, number one, the reputation of someone who isn't thinking before they share? Maybe you've got a hundred connections on social media. Maybe you've got 10,000 connections, fans and followers and friends on social media. However many you have, however many follow and receive what you are sharing, however many you touch just with the, the use of your thumbs and a, a simple post or share button, each and every time you do that, you're building a reputation, kind of like a building block. Everything you post, every comment you make, every reaction, slowly building block by block a reputation. But are you building the reputation of someone who isn't thinking before they share? That's not the way we ought to be as children of God. Look at Ephesians 4, beginning in verse 17. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. 
in ancient times, in modern times, there were people, there are people who act without thinking. But that is not us as disciples of Jesus Christ. I told you we would sprinkle in wise Proverbs all over this lesson. Consider Proverbs 14 and verse 16. One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil. But a fool is reckless and careless. You get the idea? We can just walk through Ephesians 4. We can search the Proverbs and we can begin asking such relevant questions. Am I building the reputation of someone who has a hard heart? Ephesians 4, 18, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of hearts. Or Proverbs 18 and verse 2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. How Many social media users does that describe here at the end of 2020. I'm not interested in listening. I'm not interested in considering. I'm not interested in learning. I'm not trying to understand where you're coming from. In fact, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in in putting your interests ahead of my own. All that I'm here to do is express my own opinion, maybe from a very hard heart. Am I building the reputation of someone who just doesn't care? Ephesians 4, verse 19, look at the first few words of that verse. They have become callous, unfeeling, or as the wisdom of Proverbs 13, verse 16 says, in everything the prudent acts with, a, with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. How many people act with hard, unreceptive, unconsiderate hearts on social media? And I'm not thinking about how this is going to land in the hearts and minds of others. I'm not thinking about the, the reputation that I'm building or the, the name that I wear, the name of my family. I don't care about any of that. I'm just going to do whatever it is that I want to do. Listen, that's not how disciples of Jesus act. Am I building the reputation of someone who has surrendered to sensuality? We continue there in Ephesians 4, 19. They've become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality. They're not in the driver's seat anymore. They're just doing whatever it is that feels good to them. And if it feels good, I'm going to do it. And I don't care what you think about it. Paul described those who are greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Listen to me. That is not how disciples of Jesus conduct themselves. That's not the sort of reputation we are to be building. Have you considered as you use social media, your reputation is being built? The reputation of your family is impacted? If you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, the reputation of your church family is connected to the sort of things you're, you're sharing and the way that you are expressing yourself. And so it, it's worth asking, am I building the reputation of someone who doesn't tell the truth? Look at Ephesians 4, verse 25. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, 
for we are members one of another. It used to be maybe that this was a, a more elementary sort of question. But I think especially in 2020, heading into 2021, it's worth asking as disciples of Jesus, do I know what I'm sharing, what I'm spreading, what I'm promoting? Do I know that that is true? Maybe I see something about a, 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 an enemy on the other end of the political spectrum, and I would just never, ever, ever dream of being aligned with that sort of person. And someone shares something really unflattering about that person, and I just immediately share it because it verifies what I've always thought. Disciples of Jesus think carefully. I am to be a teller of truth. I am to be a spreader of truth. Do I know what I am about to share? Am I considering the source? Is there good that is going to come from sharing this, especially if I don't know that it's true. Christians put away all falsehood and we speak the truth with our neighbors. We'll stay right there in Ephesians 4. Am I building the reputation of someone who doesn't handle anger and frustration well? Look at verse 26. Be angry. I want you to hear that. There are things that, that, that happen in the world where we righteously, justly get angry about that. But let's read the full verse. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Why would we be told not to do that sort of thing? because it gives an opportunity to the adversary of our souls. There are things in this world that frustrate us. There are things in this world that make us angry. But listen to Proverbs 12 and verse 16. The vexation of a fool is known at once. But the prudent... The wise knows when to ignore an insult. The wise knows I don't have to participate in every fight that is raging around me. I don't have to participate in every argument to which I get an invitation. Sometimes the wisest thing I can do is just move on. Sometimes the wisest thing I can do is delete. Sometimes the wisest thing I can do is unfriend, unfollow. If the influences that I am constantly opening my heart and my mind to are always just making me angry and frustrated and it's beginning to impact the way that I treat my spouse, the, the mood with which I interact with my children, how I view complete strangers, I need to think about those influences that are constantly touching my mind and my heart. Am I building the reputation of someone who is willing to steal? Look at Ephesians 4, verse 28. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, that he may have something to share with anyone in need. We live in an era where it has never been easier to subtly, deceptively, in the shadows, take things from others that don't belong to us to steal things that belong to others, to act as if some, someone else's thought, someone else's work is our own, 
to to know that, well, I'm, I'm legally supposed to pay for that, but here's an easy way that I can download that music or take that program and, and just completely get around having to pay for it and giving that worker what he or she is due. That's not how disciples of Jesus act. Whether we're interacting in the flesh face to face or we're behind a computer screen. We are not those who steal. Am I building the reputation of someone who puts others down? Ephesians 4 and verse 29. How desperately we need to hear this in today's cultural climate. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. If that was the expectation for disciples of Christ in the era of the Roman Empire, it is the expectation for disciples of Christ in 2020. We cannot stop, we cannot silence all of the corrupting talk that is going on all around us. But that doesn't mean that we need to participate in it. It doesn't mean that we need to add to it doesn't mean that we just need to keep sharing it right along with everybody else who couldn't care less about following God, couldn't care less about the reputation that they are building. No, for disciples of Jesus, this is straightforward. No corrupting talk out of our mouths, but only, only such as is good for building up. What a great exercise. This week, as we participate in social media, is what I'm about to say going to build up? Is what I'm about to share, does it fit the occasion? Is this comment that I'm about to make going to give grace to those who hear? That's how disciples of Jesus are called to conduct ourselves. And whether we do or we don't, we're building a reputation long ago in Proverbs 20 and verse 3. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof, to stay away from strife. But every fool will be quarreling. This week, on every social media channel, in person, on the news, on cable news, all around us, there will be all sorts of quarreling. Could I encourage you to remember the wisdom of Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 3? Am I building the reputation of someone who gives full vent to his or her spirit. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. All of it, along with all malice, you allow those things to settle and take root deep in your heart, and it is going to take a toll is going to have an impact, is going to affect your marriage, it's going to affect your relationship with your children, it's going to affect your relationship with your brethren, it's going to affect the way that you interact with people who need the good news of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 29 and verse 11, such a wise statement. A fool gives Full vent to his spirit. Think about those vents that you have in the floor or the ceilings of your home. When it's completely open, it's a full vent. Anything can flow through there. A fool just gives full vent to his spirit. If I think it, I'm going to say it. And I don't care who who hears or what they think about it. If I'm feeling it, I'm just going to go ahead and act on it. No restraint. No discipline. A wise man, a wise man knows when to quiet.
quietly hold back. I have loved for a long time Proverbs 17, verse 28. In fact, if you ask my kids, <laughs> they will tell you that, that they have heard me recite this many, many, many times. Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When we keep our mouths closed, we don't give evidence to others that maybe what's going on the inside isn't as wise, perhaps isn't as Christ-like as it ought to be. A fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he's deemed intelligent. Just because I'm thinking it doesn't mean I have to share it. Just because I'm thinking it and feel like saying it doesn't mean I have to broadcast it for the world to hear or the world to see. Am I building the reputation of someone who is immodest? Your Bible's still open there to Ephesians? Look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. We're just staying right here, allowing the Holy Spirit to make this relevant for us. Sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. That absolutely applies in this digital, hyper-connected age. Am I building the reputation of someone as I talk, how I comment, pictures that I share, things that I reshare from others? Am I building the reputation of someone who finds what the world uh, uh, believes to be alluring and entertaining and amusing and perfectly appropriate to, to meditate on and let in the, the, the gates of my heart? Am I acting just like the world around me? Am I building the reputation of someone who has a Filthy heart. Look at verse 4 of Ephesians 5. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking. And whether I'm saying it with my mouth or typing it with my fingers, those things are out of place for the disciple of Jesus. Instead, let there be thanksgiving. Am I building the reputation of someone who is not and may never be content? Look at verse 5 of Ephesians 5. You may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. You know just as surely as I know that some people spend so much time on social media talking about all the things they don't have, all the things they want that they'll never be able to have, or, or at least in the moment aren't able to have. So many of us use social media to play this comparison game where he has and I don't have, or she enjoys and I don't enjoy. They are able to have and I'm not able to have. My family doesn't have that. And it just eats away at me to the point of, I, I, I'm not sure I would even be happy if I can't enjoy these sorts of things. Am I building the sort of reputation of someone who shares what is shameful? Look at Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 7. Do not become partners with them. This world is marching in a particular direction. We're not partners with them. At one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern 
what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful. If it's on social media, if it's at work, face to face, if it's just Friday night and a, a, a group of guys or a, a few couples together, whatever it is, I need to be mindful of the sort of things I'm sharing, the sort of things I'm saying, what I laugh at, what I willfully participate in, would my Lord, who is holy and has called me and you to be holy, would he find that to be shameful? Things that perhaps are, are tried to be kept secret, perhaps things that are just flaunted and the world applauds all along. We've looked at a whole lot of negative things, a whole lot of ungodly things, a lot of things that are out of harmony with the character of God. We'll end in Ephesians 4. You look at verse 32. In contrast to all of that, am I building the reputation of someone who is an imitator of God? This isn't hard to understand. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another. Let's do that in all of our interactions, in person, online, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 5 verse 1, be imitators of God as beloved children. Do you see in the midst of all of this ungodliness that we noted in Ephesians 4 and throughout Ephesians chapter 5, right here in the middle, here's what we're to be. Here's what we're building as individuals, as young people, as middle-aged people, as older people, as families, as marriages, as a church family. Be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. What sort of reputation am I building? Young person, you need to understand that you don't have two lives. An in-person real life and an online fake life. No, you have you have one life. You don't have two reputations. One reputation in person and a different reputation online. No, you have one reputation. You, you don't live in two kingdoms where, well, on Sundays and on Wednesday nights, I'm a part of the kingdom of God, but on every other day throughout the rest of the day, I'm, I'm just like everybody else. No, we're to seek first. We're to seek of primary importance, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We're to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. In all of our interactions, what sort of reputation are we building? I appreciate you following with me through Ephesians 4 and 5 and that wisdom of the book of Proverbs. If you'd like to talk more about this, I'd love to do it with you. We've got one more lesson next weekend in this series. If you've missed any of the first 11, they're available at charlestownroad.org. I have appreciated so much your kind encouragement and attention. I hope you have a great weekend. If we can be of help, let us know. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day.